Good afternoon. It is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and this is uh, Studio Ghibli Week, and we're going to be doing a drawing of Haku. Because it's Wednesday, and the way I've structured things, uh, Wednesdays are always going to be a day for me to draw a dragon or a dragon-like creature. Hello, Adam. And so today we're going to be doing Haku from the movie Spirited Away. Once again, I'm using a General Pencil Company Kimberly 4B pencil, high polymer eraser by Pentel, Office Depot pink eraser special, and my Butterfly Company Snoopy hand sharpener. Thanks, Adam. Anything you want me to do for your uh, Mustang, I can, I can hook you up. <laughs> I can do some art for you, maybe. Maybe a cool logo for the side of your car. All right, so for today, again, we're going to be doing a dragon, so we're going to be doing a Haku within this space here. Um, I'm actually thinking about having him being chased by the little paper things that were sent by Zuniba. So we're going to use this space here. I'm going to kind of draw a circular shape here for his head kind of coming this way and we're going to make it kind of a three-quarter view just like so boom, boom, boom. so i'm basically creating kind of an eggplant or um, really stubby <laughs> uh, carrot shape we're going to keep it kind of organic here and just kind of go this way as if he's coming down and coming this way and then back through, coming this way, and then finishing over here. So we're going to make this kind of 3D. Okay. Center line. This is going to be kind of uh, the center line for Haku's back fur kind of thing. This is the thing that's going to kind of guide that. And then we're going to finish with this tail going up like this. All right. We're going to flush this out a little bit. We're going to figure out where his eye is going to go, where his main body is going to go to as well. I'm going to thicken this up here. All right, and then from this curve, we're gonna go down. Connect it here. So notice how I'm, this center line here, go, running through the back, kind of his spine, is going to be where we're gonna put the fur on the back of his body. And then these lines on the side I'm making are gonna be the sides, kind of like the thicker parts of his kind of a long a tubular body. So I'm trying to create this kind of, as you can see with these little indication searching lines here, I'm trying to indicate that it's tubular. The body is tubular, you know? Kind of like the body of a snake, right? And this is this area here is all gonna be for that fur that kind of runs along the length, along the spine of his body. So I want to give give that like a place holding spot because I want to maintain that. See that? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all these lines to kind of create that dimensionality of his tail and the main part of his body without losing too much information. Can you guys see that? All right. Haku is a river spirit. And he has a body kind of a like a snake or an eel, or unagi. The face of kind of a wolf, predatory wolf, right? 
claws of an eagle. I guess he's kind of a wolf slash fox, I guess you might kind of say. I don't know. If you have not seen Spirited Away, I highly recommend that during this shelter in place, you take some time and you watch it. So we're going to put his front kind of claw here. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah. Mouth scooter, shoulder, boom, just like so. Hint a bit here too as well. And he is going to be flying. So they have these, you know, this kind of these mythological creatures, these creatures from Spirited Away, based on spirits. And they have references to real animals, so we're going to create kind of a, a claw referencing an eagle. So a back claw and three front claws. Just like so. Okay. And then we'll put another one back here. to start working on Haku's face, okay? This is tricky. It's very tricky, because I don't want to necessarily lose the personality that is Haku. But he has this kind of like wolf shape, like a dog shape. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of triangulize the snout or the muzzle so I'm narrowing it here I'm creating kind of a square shape here an elongated rectangular square shape for the top of the nose okay and I'm gonna pull this down maybe right here okay and then we're going to include nostrils Just like that. And a muzzle that comes down. Right? And goes out. And this is going to be the line for his mouth. I'm going to pull this up to here. Use my classic pink eraser from Office Depot to kind of square some of this off. Lovely. Yeah, there we go. Much better. Thanks, Johnny. Give him his eye and brow line, just like so. And he has kind of human eyes, you know, because that doesn't get lost when he transforms into the dragon. Right? Okay. Give him a hard, heavy brow. 
very determined. One thing we cannot forget are the whiskers that come off. So we're gonna live a little, give a little reference here. Reference here, coming off the side. A little hair here, hair coming off here. And then these whiskers are kind of like, you know, they're ever present in, in a lot of interpretations of Asian dragons. And they kind of whip around and we're gonna have them kind of do the same thing here too as well. Kind of whip around and be a part of a, the flow of this drawing. And they're pretty thick actually, so we're going to use this searching line, run a parallel line with it. And I got a little carried away here. Get rid of that. Maybe pull it up here and then match it with this. Again, if you're doing this drawing with me, that doesn't, you don't have to do these the way that I'm doing them. Not at all, you can do your own thing. I had a, a good brunch today with some students and my colleague and friend, Mrs. Letterly. Checking in with students and seeing how they're doing with this unusual situation that we all find ourselves in. I think we're all just kind of hoping for some normalcy. I know that I am. I'm, I'm hoping. kind of on the cards right now all right so now we have kind of fur we're going to include his ear again it's kind of a fox shape just like that another one on the other side okay and then he's got these really kind of interesting like billy goat horns you might say and I go up and out, up and out, just like that. And then this is also where we're going to start putting in these kind of darker hairs, right? Just like that. Which are going to represent, again, that kind of middle, middle line that goes along his spine. Okay? Yeah. Muzzle. Now, we kind of have the basis for everything done, but what I want to do is also want to put in some of the uh, little paper creatures that are chasing Haku. As if he's trying to fly back to the bathhouse, right? Trying to fly back to the bathhouse. So, we'll put some of those in. Maybe I'm being a little ambitious here. Who knows, yeah? We kinda wanna, I don't wanna make them kinda loose too as well at the same time, but I don't wanna be too crazy. You know, 
as if they're chasing him and he's trying to get away. So I'm going to be drawing these like so. Attacking him and following him. It's going to be hard, but I want to do it. I have some of them kind of torn up a little bit. So what we're going to do now, or what I'm going to do right now, is start working on the, kind of like the middle fur, going along the spine area. Yeah, just like so. Hi, Sophia. Hello. How are you doing, Haskin? Long time, no talk. So all I'm doing right now is I'm kind of darkening in the spots for his fur on the spine of his body. Putting these, this fur in is kind of a placeholder for a lot of stuff. Again, some of this is going to be lost here because this fur is overlapping and covering up part of the back there. Hey, Chris. So I'm going through now and just 
put in that the fur that goes onto the spine of Haku. And if you have seen Spirited Away, you'll know what I'm talking about. One of the main characters of the movie. And if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it. You know. Get it. Make sure you get it. See it. Watch it. Enjoy it. It's really good. Okay. So we have the kind of the basis for um, Haku now. We're kind of cruising along now. So I'm going to go through and kind of isolate and darken some lines. Clean things up here. Because I now have kind of an idea where the whiskers, these really long whiskers are going to go. I'm going to erase information in that basically are inside of them so that I can, can clean them up and isolate them. So I don't lose much when I'm starting the shade. I'm gonna pull this line in a little bit here. So it doesn't look like his neck is so thick. There we go. That's better. Looks much better. So this week again is Studio Ghibli. Next week. The first week in May is going to be um, Star Wars week. Because it's May the 4th. It'll be May the 4th next week. So why not? It was my wife's idea to start doing theme weeks. And... I will say it's made my life a little bit easier when it comes to figuring out what I'm going to do for the week. So much easier. Because then all the drawings during the week are interconnected. Hey guys. Hey Pablo. Hey Mark. So I'm going to work my way from going from left to right again, just because of the way the nature of the beast here is. I think I'm going to get rid of that. And yeah, I'm just going to get rid of that, I think. Compositionally, it's not working. Finishing off 
sections with shading. Hardening some lines to give it a good outline. Just cleaning things up here on this side. Okay. We're also going to put some scales here on the knuckles, just like so. Make it look more hawk-like. So these are just rounded lines that are connected to each other, just like so. And this is easy to do. Okay. And then as you get closer to here, we just are going to elongate those, just like so, and make them much larger. Okay, just like that. Okay. And the way our composition is going, we're only going to be doing that on one. And I actually, compared to the anime, I'm, to the movie, I'm actually making this claws much bigger than in the movie. We're also going to put kind of a little hint of the underbelly going this way. And then diving down, just like that. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna shade the fur on the spine as we go through. We're gonna do that right now. So I'm gonna start first with a middle value. And that middle value is going to be, if it was on the value chart, it'd be like a five maybe a six. So we're gonna use this as kind of like a placeholder to figure out where we're gonna put our highlights and our darker values, our low lights, all along here. So I'm using a distant grip, meaning that I'm holding the pencil further away from the tip than if I was doing a detail. And I'm using kind of like the side of the pencil so I can get a nice kind of soft middle value as I go through. If I want to make it darker, I'm going to add more pressure and then also change the angle of the tip of my pencil so that I can get a nice sharper, a sharper kind of line. But right now I'm just kind of quickly going through and filling in the area that I think is going to best represent that fur along the spine. So again, distant grip, a distant grip. Hi, Ermelin. And that distant grip is going to allow me to kind of fill in more space that I want to fill in quicker and more consistently than if I was just using the tip of my pencil. Okay. Over here. Same kind of thing, going all the way around, distant grip. And notice how I'm also kind of 
keeping my hand elevated off the page because I don't want to smudge what I've already just shaded with my pencil. Going around the whiskers. Don't want to shade those. See that? And normally when I'm usually drawing, I'm Mackenzie, miss you too, kid. Normally when I'm drawing, I'm turning the paper. And in this, I'm actually having to kind of push and step around the paper. It's, it's a little awkward, but it works. Okay. So now we have kind of a middle value to show the movement of that spine fur. If that makes any sense. Okay. You know, that's what we do. And then right here, I'm going to add some shaded value for bridging the nose and the nose. A little darker on this side. Same fitting for that. Bottom of the muzzle. All right. So we have a pretty decent drawing going forward. We got a lot of searching lines we're gonna kind of get rid of here. Yeah, clean that up a little bit. More searching lines we want to get rid of. And again, searching lines are just those lines that we use to create the form of our of our final drawing. I kind of like the sketchy lines that go and help us f figure out our composition and our subject matter. And when we don't need them anymore, we just erase them, right? Because they're just searching lines. So you just go through and just lightly push. I'm gonna lightly clean up some of these little dudes. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Get rid of some of these searching lines. using some directional lines to create volume. Clean up some of these edges, chunk some of the values, clean it up and make it nice and pretty. I'm gonna work my way all the way around. Make this look more like fur. Feather and soften some of these edges. that okay same thing with this fur up here I'm gonna soften some of it and connect it to the tail and I want to keep oh I want to keep the natural look of it. Also the energy of the lines too as well. I 
Thank you, Erica. I don't want to lose the energy in the line. So I'm darkening, feathering, and I'm creating directional lines and smoothing those out, darkening some of these edges. And the closer I get to these curves here, the more upright my lines are gonna become. And the reason is I want to show, again, that illusion of depth. And by doing a narrow, narrow directional lines here, force of the eye, to believe it's seeing something that's more rounded. Okay, and as I get closer, I'm gonna kinda connect some of these lines and I'm fading them out too at the same time. And pulling them up. See that? And on the underside here, the other side, I'm gonna darken this line. Same thing, directional lines, and the closer I get to the tighter curve, I want to make them stand up more. Further along, I'm gonna elongate them. Closer to the curve, they're gonna stand up higher. That's just a little trick. See that? Same thing here. So we're getting there. So right now I'm just kind of going through and cleaning things up from where my searching lines were. As in darkening the outline, using directional lines, as in lines that show the direction of where I want the viewer to see the shape, how those lines create shape and volume, okay? So that's what I'm doing right now. So like I was saying before, the further away from those curves, the, the more straight those angles are going to be, the closer we get to the curve, the more upright they're going to be, but still curved, okay? Switching pencils. 
pencils. <laughs> I have to switch pencils a lot. Okay, and then the closer that we get to Haku's face, the more detailed the, the fur is going to look. Distant grip here now for shading. And I'm just adding a little bit more pressure as I'm going through. Still trying to preserve some of the energy that I created with my searching lines. I don't want to lose that. Probably my favorite part of doing any drawing is the searching line part, is, you know, just the sketching part. It's probably the most fun. Hi, Bianca. So I'm using a combination of different grips on the pencil depending on what I want to do with the fur. So for like areas that I'm trying to fill in a lot of um, graphite, I'm using a distant grip, less pressure. And then the areas that where I really want to kind of get some cool lines and details, I'm getting closer to the tip of my pencil and putting more pressure. Okay. So right now I'm using a distant grip. And so like this is one of my searching lines. It's a little funky little thing. I'm just gonna cover it up. Elongate some some lines and then blend it in. Some searching lines just kinda get away from you. You just gotta pull them and rein them back in. Again, I'm preserving the white. I'm trying my best to preserve the white here for the whiskers of Haku. I'm trying my best. Sometimes it's hard. Get down to it. We're almost near the end, and your end is in sight. Kinda.
so for his horns, we're going to put a little texture as if they're like wood horns. Harder lines, kind of on one side. Give it a little bit more weight. Put a little hair right there. And then refine his ears. And darken these values for that back hair. Right? All I'm doing right now is I'm putting pressure down and then kind of lifting up and pulling. inside the ear. Run the muzzle. Leading into the horns. And then shading behind the ears. We're going to go through and just spend a little bit of time cleaning up these little marauders that are chasing after him. Some of them have seen better days because it's kind of already chewed them up.
Okay. I think. We are nearing the end of this draw. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you're just joining us, you can always click the link in the bio to watch the whole video from start to finish. Again, this whole week is all about Hayao Miyazaki's Studio Ghibli and creating art based on his beloved films. I thank you guys for joining me today. Tomorrow we'll be doing again another drawing from Studio Ghibli at 12 o'clock on Thursday. And it'll be a multimedia day. More than likely I'm going to be doing a Totoro. So I hope you all have a blessed rest of your day. Stay home, stay safe, and I'll see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Thank you.